Well, Mr. Prime Minister, it's great to have you here. You've been a good friend and a great ally, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the White House and have a chance to repay some of the hospitality that you uh, you uh, uh, extended to me and uh, at the G20 summit and uh, in Rome. And uh, I guess we're in the G7. We're going to be meeting a little bit later on Sunday. We, uh, we had that meeting, and uh, we're going to have a second COVID meeting as well. Yes. So we spent a lot of time together. You've been one of the closest allies we've had in, uh, in responding to the seamless brutality of Putin. And uh, I just think that uh, your cooperation, had, sometimes at a greater cost than to others, uh, to take on Putin and What's going on in Ukraine has been really incredible. And, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, Italy and the United States have a long history of shared bonds. And uh, so many, so many Italian Americans who are so proud of their heritage here and you've observed. Congratulations on your award. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so, welcome. We got a lot to talk about, but uh, I'm <clears throat> you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me say that uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you here today. Um, thanks for this invitation. Thanks for this magnificent hospitality. Our two countries, the ties between our two countries have always been very strong. And uh, if anything, this war in Ukraine made them stronger. I agree. Uh, if Putin ever thought that he could divide us, he failed. There's no question about that. We, we stand together in condemning the invasion of Ukraine, uh, sanctioning Russia, and on helping Ukraine, as uh, President Zelensky is asking us to do. Well, but I have to tell you that in, in Italy and in Europe now, People want to put an end to this massacres, to these massacres, to this violence, this butchering that's happening. And people think about what can we do to bring peace. We we certainly have to use any direct, indirect, indirect channel of communication. But is that enough? What can we do? Uh, people think that. Uh, at least they want to think about the possibility of bringing a ceasefire and starting again some credible negotiations. That's the situation right now. I think that we have to think deeply on how to address this. We will continue, you and I, to work on energy and security food security especially, which is now another issue there. We will talk later about that, what to do. And, um, and uh, the other thing that we want to say just at the opening, then I don't think we will discuss this later, but uh, what happened in Ukraine is going to bring a, a drastic change in European Union. We've always been close, now we're going to be much closer. And, uh, but I know I can, I can count on your support as a true friend of Europe and of Italy, of course. Thank you, Joe. Well, look, I just want to add one thing to that. <clears throat> I believe that uh, a strong European Union is in the interest of the United States. Granted, it adds competition economically, but it's good. It's good. And uh, <clears throat> I joked when uh, the Union was formally formed as saying this is like we have a thing called the Commerce Clause. You yeah. go from one state to the other, you don't have to go through checkpoints. <laughs> well, it's sort of Europe's Commerce Clause. And it's good for everyone. And the thing that I most appreciate about you is that our effort from the very beginning to bring NATO and the EU yeah. in lockstep. Putin really believed he could split us. Yeah. And we got all stepped up. But anyway, I'm delighted you're here, anxious to talk to you, and watch how they get out here without getting hurt. I, 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 
actually walk out of the room without knocking each other down. Mr. President.